One other issue I want to address, and that's this, um, which is relevant since October 7th, it's the issue of protests. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we've got these we've got these protests in, on campuses everywhere. We've also got almost every weekend now in New York, it seems like the streets are blocked. And, and, uh, and there's this notion in America that people have a right to protest. It's part of right of right to sp free speech is the right to go out and, 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 uh, you know, block streets in the name of, uh, speech. So, uh, is, is that consistent? No, Ankar Gatte gave a really, well, after, the first time I heard him talk about this was on your show mm -hmm. around the time of, of the Charlottesville, um, whatever you want to call them, demonstrations, um, uh, back in whatever that was or early in Trump's presidency. Um, and uh, he was making the point that there just isn't a right to do this kind of thing. And it's a point that, that Rand had made uh, and that we, we, we need to understand that these kind of protests are not rightful um, to have the background context to think about all the other issues that come up with them. And I invited him to give a talk uh, after I was down here at, at Texas uh, on this. It was called something like questioning the, the sacred um, about the right to protest. And he, it was a good talk. I was hoping a version of it would be in the, the book that we're promoting, uh, the First mm -hmm. Amendment book. He had he planned to edit it, but that didn't quite get done in time. Hopefully it'll be in a, a future edition. Yep. But I do talk a bit about it in my piece. You could find Ankar's talk online, and there's some discussion of it also in the book in an appendix where Tara, uh, Ankar, Alan, Giorno, and I are all uh, talking about these issues. But no, the, the, the right to free speech means you have a, a right to speak uh, on your own property, uh, to people who are willing to listen to you. Um, you don't have a right to go on other people's property, like private property, like the Occupy Wall Street people did. They were just, they commandeered someone's park and it was private property and they, uh, you know, took it over. They were banging drums, making noise, making it impossible for people to do business and go about their days. This is not rightful. This is a violation of the rights of the people around them. And it doesn't make it right that they have something to say, even if the thing they had to say was interesting or true or important, um, it doesn't give them the right to do that any more than that um, Palestinian student who tried to take over her law school professor's house and give a speech had a right to his house because she had a speech to make. Uh, that doesn't give you a right. Now, when it's public property, which there shouldn't be, but you know, public streets, a public park, et cetera, that somewhat complicates the issue um, because it's not someone is particular's property you're seizing and there shouldn't be public property. And one of the reasons that there shouldn't be public property is it raises the question of who should get to do what on it. And there's no objective way to decide who should get to do what on it because there's no legitimate rationale for the property existing. But insofar as we do have things that are public property, streets, roads, et cetera, um, uh, parks, they each have alleged purposes that they're being supported by tax dollars for. In the case of roads, it's clear to get from place one place to another. And nobody then has the right to take over a road and stop people from getting from one place to the other just to express their ideas. Um, parks, it's a little more debatable, but I think the basic idea still holds. It's for recreation. Now, once the government starts allowing people to use these places as forums, you can get a permit to, you know, uh, give a speech in a park or anybody is allowed to um, say whatever they want as, as it happens in the um, public uh, areas, uh, non-classroom areas, open spaces on the University of Texas's campus. This is a decision uh, Texas's government has made. So anybody can stand out there and say whatever thing they want. Once it 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 starts allowing these things to be used uh, as uh, pulpits, basically, then I think it's it's a application of the principle of free speech that an application of the first amendment that it has to be content neutral in the policies it allows but that's not because anybody has a right to this property it's already a violation of free speech um that my tax dollars are being used to support a space where anybody can come and say whatever the hell they want including things i might find abhorrent and and i can't stop them even though it's my money that's being taken to do it right and likewise for every other person in texas and who's who's being taxed to support this it's already a violation of free speech it's just that that violation is compounded when a particular ideology is overlaid over it so um uh if 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 if, if the view is a majority view uh, then people can say it, but if it's a minority, they can't, or vice versa. So it's important to 
if you have this uh, violation of rights, which is involved in letting public property be used this way, that you then don't compound it with a double standard. And that's so what gives some um, some uh, sense to the idea that they have a right to do this, but they don't. 